Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show where you're probably going to be like, Jesse, are you sleeping enough? You got bags under your eyes, man. What's going on with you? Look, when you when you run your own business and you're doing things sometimes, you don't get that much sleep. It's fine. I'm okay. I'll be all right. Don't you worry. I'm glad you're concerned. But it, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for caring. Today in the news, boy, it was... Some sort of weekend, and we've still got stuff to talk about. So, like we talked about yesterday, while G4 was closing its doors, another big name in the world of gaming, Rooster Teeth, was having a meltdown all its own. Grown out of the old machinima days of web series like Red vs. Blue, Rooster Teeth has since then branched out to numerous other popular genres and platforms with streams and let's plays and even anime. But as they grew and became much more popular, there were some rumblings in the gaming world about how it wasn't the best place to work. All that fun, creative, kooky community energy that we saw online really didn't seem to be what was happening behind the scenes. And this weekend, all that kind of blew up. Rooster Teeth veteran ex-staffer Caden Jensen accused the company of overworking her, underpaying her, and fostering an environment in which she was repeatedly called a homophobic slur. Working at Rooster Teeth for almost a decade, Jensen alleges the company pushed her for crunch, paid her 30000 less than everyone else, and only wheeled her out for various pride-related things, while in the office calling her British slang for cigarettes, which was then translated, apparently, into the nickname Fugs when on screen, which allowed fans to then call her that, and I can see how that would very much suck. Former personality and creative director Gavin Free admitted to being one of the people who used the offensive nickname. Co-founder and current producer Jeff Ramsey implied that he did as well. The long and the short of it is, I fucking sucked, Ramsey wrote on Twitter over the weekend. I wasn't funny, I failed you, and I continue to be sorry. But it didn't end there as Micah Burton came to Caden's aid online, having left Rooster Teeth in 2018, saying, I've been very quiet about my experience with RT, but with the now vocalization of regret of lack of support for my ex-coworkers, I can say with confidence, I didn't leave because of the community. I left because of the company. She tweeted at the time. Following Jensen's post over the weekend, she wrote, Seeing the N-word written on a whiteboard wasn't even close to my worst experience there. Meanwhile, Rooster Teeth is attempting to damage control the best they can while also trying to address its staff layoffs. And then this caused people like Alana Pierce to follow up with a video about how she believes this is only going to make things worse for the remaining staff. Then, the previous manager of Inside Gaming, Autumn Farrell, posted that the HR department was less than helpful and things would be swept under the rug. By the way, this is your weekly reminder that the HR department is not there for you, they're there for the company. Anyway, let's continue. It is not ending there, though, because many employees are coming out saying that they've been underpaid, abused, or had false promises made to them. In fact, it appears to be getting so out of hand that Rooster Teeth staff were removed from Reddit mod positions as well. But that's not even the end of it, because as of last night, all sorts of other stuff is coming up. So Caden, who brought these initial allegations, now is being hit with a 15-year-old video about how they said the N-word, and now it's being used to be like, well, how can you complain about being, you know, uh, called one thing, but using another, th you know, it is a shit show, is what it is, and... It just keeps updating every few hours, another pile of shit is thrown on it, and it's just... Anyway, in other hopefully better news, this Thursday, we're getting a Resident Evil stream. According to a tweet from the official account, a new Resident Evil showcase will be coming this week, and we're gonna see something new from Resident Evil 8 Gold, and the very hype Resident Evil 4 remake. First revealed back in June, the Resident Evil 4 remake is expected to keep the good of the original while changing some of the things that, you know, were uh, mechanically weird or some of the lighting effects and things like that. It make it a little more modern, a little more fun. We'll see what that actually looks like on Thursday, hopefully. Meanwhile, the gold edition of Resident Evil 8 features a new third-person mode, the Mercenaries mode, and the Rosemary Winters playable story that will conclude the Winter storyline from the last few games. I absolutely love Resident Evil. So I'm excited for the stream. I'm excited to see what they're gonna do. Really excited for more information on the new four and the DLC for eight. Honestly, tuning in, may even co-stream, no clue, but we'll find out together, I suppose. Just wanted to end this episode uh, on something a little more uplifting. Speaking of uplifting, here we go. You can help uplift this channel to a million subscribers. That's what I did. We're so close, we're like, 
just over 6,000 away. We can do this. And by we, I mean mostly you. You're doing all the work, but I'm here to cheer you on. By which, I mean vicariously me, because it's my channel. <laughs> I think the math checks out on that. Anyway, that's it. I'll see you all tomorrow for another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News.